Chibi the Podcast, presented by Just Chibi Productions. Hi there, I'm your host, Bondu. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about cheese powder. That's not cheese. Well, it's not not cheese. What? We're also going to talk about cheese and ice cream. Ice cream's not cheese. And we're going to tell a very cheesy joke. That's cheesy. Stay tuned for all of our shenanigans on Just Cheesy, the podcast, episode 19. Shenanigans. So cheesy, what do you know about cheese powder? I like it in my mac and cheese. According to preparedfoods.com, cheese powders are used for dry snacks or sauces or rehydrated and used in fillings. Yeah, but is it even cheese? I guess it depends. Some powders have no cheese, but typical cheese powder has a combination of up to about 15% cheese, whey, vegetable oil, maltodextrin, and calcium cassinate. So what does that mean? Well, I guess that means it's kind of cheese. It has some cheese in it. It's just not 100% cheese. Huh. I was reading an article on Wired.com called How the U.S. Military Helped Invent Cheetos. And there's excerpts in here from a book called Combat Ready Kitchen, How the U.S. Military Shapes the Way You Eat what? by Anastasia Marks de Salcino. The article talks a little bit about craft in the World War I era where they learned how to make a cheese dip type product that came in a tin. Oh. And the cheese was made by melting traditional cheese together and mixing them with emulsifying salts. And the reason they needed something like like this. It was relatively cheap. Yeah. It could withstand high temperatures oh, sure. and actually melting those ingredients pasteurized them. Okay. So it inactivated the live bacteria and enzymes and it contributed to a longer shelf life. Nice. And the army placed its first order for that processed cheese, which came in only one flavor. And during World War One, they bought 25 million quarter pound tins from Kraft. Holy cow. It says here that by the time World War Two rolled around, the military was, quote, a raving cheeseaholic. No. They consumed it on sandwiches, vegetables, potatoes, and even pasta. Uh, yum. In 1944 alone, the military bought 100 million pounds from Kraft. Holy cow. As well as 500,000 pounds of cheese spread with optional bacon bits. Okay, but what about cheese powder? Well, the military was trying to find new ways to store, ship, and eat cheese. Okay. So at the beginning of World War II, they embarked on a dehydration campaign. Huh. They were dehydrating everything from fruits and vegetables, flour, potatoes, eggs, and, of course, cheese. Delish. The first real cheese powder was developed in 1943 by George Sanders, a USDA dairy scientist. Mm, that's a mouthful. A lot of foods are dried so that they can be reconstituted, but in the case of cheese, if you dry it out and press it into a block, it produces dust. Oh. So obviously this would rule out reconstituting it into slices or chunks. Uh, yeah. But it would more likely be used in a cooking scenario as a flavoring. How do they dehydrate Cheese. The patent says that they use full fat cheese containing about 38% moisture. Okay. It's shredded and distributed evenly in a layer on trays, screens, or smooth surfaces. All right. It looks like it's basically just room temperature air for a while and then eventually 145 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour and a half to two hours. That's interesting. It's preferable to have at least 145 degrees because of the pasteurization effect. Oh, okay. And then the dehydrated product can be cooled and compressed into cakes or packaged in any manner that you wish. Wow. According to a New Yorker.com article, Object of Interest Cheese Powder, apparently the Germans also had cheese powder included in their rations. That's interesting. An article called The Invention of Cheetos, How the U.S. Military Participated on the website SoDelicious.Recipes. They say after the war, there was a lot of cheese powder left in the warehouses of the military. Really? A lot of the food manufacturers were using the powder to flavor their products. Oh, yum. In 1948, the Frito Company debuted what they called the first ever American cheesy snack made with dehydrated cheese. It was made by extruding cornmeal and water, puffed, fried in oil, and coated with an orange dehydrated Wisconsin cheese. This snack is... Do you know what it is, Cheesy? Duh. Cheetos. Cheetos. Not a sponsor, but if they were, their ad would go right here. Apparently, a more effective way to make powdered cheese is 
Spray Dry. Spray Dry. There are a couple of companies that claim to have led the way in cheese powders. One is a Danish company called Lactosan. The factory manager, Christian Jensen, began experimenting with melted cheese and industrial spray dryers, producing what we recognize as modern cheese powder in around 1951. Wow. In the U.S., we have a company called Commercial Creamery. They're the proud owner of the website cheesepowder.com, and they claim that they pioneered the manufacturing of cheese powders for the food industry over 60 years ago. What the heck is spray drying? Wikipedia.org says spray drying is a method of producing a dry powder from a liquid or slurry by rapidly drying with a hot gas. The hot gas is typically air, but it could be a liquid like ethanol or it could be nitrogen. Uh, okay. I was curious to see what this process might look like. There's a YouTube video called Introduction to Spray Drying. So from what I gather, it's very industrial. They have a slurry in a tank and it goes through these other tanks and air is pumped in and at the end you get powder. <laughs> You're so technical, Fondue. Yeah, well, anyway, this video is about general safety protocols and the takeaway that I had was if the spray drying has gas like that ethanol, you could die of asphyxiation. Oh my. You could have an inhalation or skin contact problem because of powder contact. Oh no. And the other danger is explosion. Explosion? Yeah, the video said that they could have problems with dust, gas, and heat, but that dust is more explosive than dynamite. Holy cow. Right? Who would have thought that uh, powdered cheese could be dangerous? Yeah, not me. So, do you want to know what is not dangerous? Cheese? We talked about this in a previous episode, but they're at it again. The folks at Van Leeuwen Ice Cream have a specialty product out right now. Guess what it is? Cheese? Mac and cheese ice cream. What? Ew, no why? Well, it looks like they teamed up with Kraft Mac and Cheese to make an ice cream. They say, uh, I'm quoting from the Van Leeuwen Ice Cream dot com website. Have you ever met someone who didn't smile while eating ice cream or while eating a comforting bowl of Kraft macaroni and cheese? Yeah, we didn't think so. So why not enjoy both at the same time in the same bowl with the same mouth? That does not sound good. Well, I don't know if I'll ever get to find out. I went on their website. It looks like it's sold out online and supposedly they carry it at Walmart, but I didn't see it there either. So I guess we'll have to wait until the next time it comes out. That's a hard now. I'm of the mindset. Don't knock it till you try it. But it got me thinking about ice cream and cheese. Oh, boy. And it's not the only ice cream that has cheese in it. Really? Yeah, so Salt and Straw has one called Pear and Blue Cheese. Ew. And it's got cave-aged crumbles of Rogue Creamery blue cheese in it. Ew. Jenny's has goat cheese with red cherries. Ew. But the most interesting thing to me was something called queso or queso ice cream in the Philippines that uses cheddar cheese. Oh, come on. On. In an article in cheeseprofessor.com, they say that cheddar cheese entered the Philippines after World War II, and it's now common on a lot of pastries and other dishes. Okay. Lamar Foods in Pittsburgh, California, has been making traditional Filipino treats for over 50 years. Really? They have uba queso, which features the cheese shards in scoops of neon purple yam. yam. They have queso queso, which means super cheesy. And they have maize con queso, which is the cheese, the ice cream, and sweet corn kernels. It's out of control. The article goes on to say Gabrielle Casada is a member of the family's third generation and the family name actually translates as cheesy. Aww. I guess we'll have to try it one day. Yeah, we will. So cheesy, are you ready for a joke? You bet. What did the cheese say when it got shredded? I don't know. I've felt greater. <laughs> Get oh it? Oh my, so bad. It's not bad. It's just a little bit cheesy. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to episode 19. We truly enjoyed ourselves. Yeah, we did. Join us next week for episode number 20. Stay cheesy, everybody.